star passes are an integral and exciting part of roller derby. They keep the play dynamic and give the teams opportunity to increase their offensive opportunity, stem the bleeding from a defensive setback, or even allow a jammer with a skate malfunction to keep their team from suffering a two-minute power jam. But for referees, they can be the stuff of nightmares. This presentation is going to be broken down into two parts. The first will be ways of handling the star pass, some of the problems referees have, and hopefully some of the coping mechanisms for the modern game. The second will deal with the penalties and possible penalty scenarios. Star passes are something that needs to be addressed from a team perspective. It's not just the JAMA referee issue. We all need to be ready to help them out. Before we begin, however, I'd like to give you some fair warning. This presentation is not the official word from the WFTDA or MRDA. I am a level 4 referee with the WFTDA, but I am not working for them, and this has no official approval from them. I'm just a guy who wants to help out. And like anything that doesn't come with a WFTDA or MRDA seal of approval, take with an appropriate level of salt. In an effort to keep this presentation as correct as possible, I'm including the date that this presentation was recorded. In the event that I need to update the presentation due to something that was clarified or just out and out wrong, this date will change and there will be an update in the change log that's listed with the presentation on refed.com. The date of this recording is March 8, 2015, and there have been no updates since the original presentation was recorded. Let's start with the by-the-book scenario on how a star pass happens. We can start mudding the waters later. Simply put, the jammer takes off their helmet cover and hands it to the pivot. For a brief moment, both the jammer and pivot are holding the cover, and once the jammer releases the cover, poof! The original jammer is now a blocker, and the former pivot is now an inactive jammer. Some prerequisites for the star pass are... Both the jammer and pivot must be in the engagement zone. Both the jammer and pivot must not be down, in the derby sense of the word, and must not be out of bounds. Once the transfer has occurred, they can be any of those things, just like any other player within the normal legal boundaries. So, on the whole, pretty simple. Really, really simple for those of us who remember some older rule sets, but we shall not speak of those dark days except for when we have to speak of those dark days. But we do have our own crosses to bear, even when the rule itself is simpler. And for that, I only need to speak two words. Star stash. For those who are unfamiliar with the star stash, you could say it's a trick play, like the pump fake in basketball, or perhaps a closer analogy, if you're familiar with American football, is running the option. In this case, the jammer removes the cover from her helmet, but instead of passing it, draws the opposing team into focusing not just on her as the jammer, but also on the pivot in order to block that star pass. This, if done right, opens up additional holes for the jammer who can exit the engagement zone. So instead of passing the star, she just stashes it in her hand. Of course, she always has the option of actually passing it, similar to the option play, which means we now have to carefully watch a very small piece of cloth, sometimes wadded into a little ball, lest we miss the transition, or get faked out, just like the other blockers on the track. So, I have mixed feelings on this. On one hand, I want to say that if you try to hide the cover to fool people, you run the risk of fooling the officials too. On the other hand, I hate making mistakes. And that's just what happened if I lose the actual jammer. Not only do I feel bad for myself, but I feel like I've let the skaters down for doing what is a legal tactic. Ultimately, I can't blame the skater. The star stash has become a staple of modern roller derby because it is so effective. Have I been fooled by this? Yes, I have. And I've seen others get fooled by this, too. Screw-ups happen to everyone. We're human. It happens. 
And since I've had it happen to me, I've spent a good deal of time thinking about ways to help myself not get fooled again when I'm the jammer referee and how to help other jammer referees in similar situations. But Star Stash is notwithstanding, there are other possible pitfalls for the intrepid jammer referee that may cause us to miss a star pass. For instance, small jammer, big blockers. One of the arguments against checking in women's hockey is that there can be too much of a size difference between players. Roller Derby blows that argument out of the water. But when it comes to star passes, a smaller jammer can easily get surrounded by larger blockers and prevent you from seeing the cover transfer. Jammers on the outside. Even an average or a tall jammer can be difficult to spot when on the outside of the track. And finally, it can also be easy to lose the jammer cover, especially if it ends up being wadded up in a little ball inside the jammer's hand. I seriously doubt this is intentional. I'm sure it's just the understandable desire to not lose that cover that does this, but it doesn't make us any easier for us jam refs either. In all of these cases, the best way to help the jammer referee is by passing along additional information both to and from the pack refs, both inside and outside. I've yet to find anything foolproof, but here's what I'm doing. Feel free to try it out, and if you like it, use it. If you don't like it, don't use it. If you find something better, don't just tell me, tell everyone. If I'm the jam ref, as soon as I see the star cover come off, I tell the pack refs. Okay? I'm also telling myself to keep focus, but primarily it's to the pack refs, so if they see something that contradicts me, I get told about it. But it starts with, jammer cover is off, followed by intermittent announcements of, jammer still has the cover. You see where I'm going? If I say, jammer still has the cover, and a pack ref sees otherwise, I can be directed immediately over to the pivot who is now the jammer. If I'm an inside pack ref and I see the helmet cover go off, I say much the same thing to start with. Jammer cover off. Maybe add possible star pass. I don't say a whole lot after that until I see the actual jammer change. At that point, I frequently say pass complete, and I can then see if the jam ref has it in hand or if I need to move to the next step, which is to tell the jam ref, your jammer is that way. If I'm an outside pack ref, I do much the same, except louder and usually with fewer syllables. If the pass happens on the outside of the track, I will yell out to the jam ref, pass complete, or just complete. If the jam ref doesn't catch it and you can't get their intention, work on an inside pack ref or just go inside. It's probably worth addressing that some of you may be concerned that the other team, who may not have been aware of the star pass, could now become aware of it. It's a valid concern, but I think this is necessary for two reasons. First, referee-to-referee -referee communication involves game information all the time. Take the front inside pack ref, telling the jammer referee that the jammer and any blockers engaging the jammer are in play. The in, 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 out. It's necessary information for us to do our jobs correctly. And this is no different. And that's really the second reason, too. We need this to do our jobs correctly. Maybe someone will come up with a better way to get this information out to those who need it. But until then, I've seen too many people, competent, good referees, miss the pass. Until then, I'm a fan of over-communicating. we cannot ask jammers to get larger or only pass the star in front of us. That would be silly and antithetical to the game. So we have to adapt. We have to communicate, help each other out. And sometimes we have to admit that mistakes happen and try to do better next time. Let's look at some possible hiccups from the skater side of things that can happen during a star pass and how we need to deal with them. First, let's look at the dropped star. So the jammer takes off her helmet cover and becomes an inactive jammer, but still a jammer. 
and then drops the cover while trying to pass it. This should be treated exactly like if the cover popped off the jammer's helmet, which means the cover can be recovered by either the jammer or the pivot. If the jammer picks it up, no big deal, we're back where we were. But if the pivot picks it up, we need to watch for several things. One, does the pivot put the cover on her helmet? If so, the pivot has initiated an illegal star pass and earns the illegal procedure penalty. Two, it's become very common for pivots who take a legal star pass to not put on the cover until after they exit the engagement zone, especially if they were on their initial pass. In this scenario, however, the pivot is still the pivot. And if so, the front inside pack ref needs to issue an out of play warning, followed by a failure to return if she does not comply. In both of these two scenarios, the burden could be on the inside pack refs because the jammer, and by definition the jammer referee, could be at a totally different area of the track. It's also the responsibility of the inside pack refs in the event of a penalty to alert the penalty box staff that the incoming skater is a blocker and not a jammer. The third possible option is the pivot could bring the cover back to the jammer, who, if she takes it, can keep the cover or immediately hand it back to the pivot for a successful star pass. There is a fourth scenario. The pivot could hold onto that cover for the remainder of the jam. As long as she doesn't do anything illegal, such as putting it on or picks up an out of play penalty, there's nothing illegal about picking up a fallen cover and holding on to it indefinitely. The next scenario is similar, which is the jammer throws the helmet cover. I've seen several occasions where pivots actively avoid the thrown cover like it's the plague. In fact, it's not. They can grab the cover, but just not put it on. Like with the dropped cover, it's not a completed star pass. The pivot can grab that cover midair and hand it back to the jammer for that jammer to either return to active jammer status or for a legal star pass. However, if a blocker grabs that cover midair, or like in the first scenario, a dropped or fallen cover, that is an illegal star pass initiated by that blocker because only pivots and jammers can be involved in star passes and only pivots and jammers can recover fallen, dropped, or thrown helmet covers. Further, pivots can also throw that jammer helmet cover back to the jammer. The next possible issue involves where either the jammer or pivot are down, out of bounds, or out of play. In these scenarios, we have an illegal star pass to be given to the jammer as the initiator, assuming there's no other extenuating circumstances. In the olden days, when the star pass wasn't complete until the pivot actually donned the cover, it was possible that the jammer would commit a penalty before the pivot made the pass complete, and we could issue an additional warning Color, number, you are not the jammer, and you are out of play. I haven't seen that in use since star pass rules were updated, since most of the time a pivot should know if a pass is legal or not. But in the case of something like this, where perhaps the call is delayed or the pivot is just really, really fast, the pivot may assume that the pass is complete and telling them that they are not the jammer, or what we sometimes call the fancy pivot, is something we should have in our pockets for these types of situations. The next scenario is pretty quick. The pivot takes the helmet cover off the jammer's helmet. Penalty to the pivot for initiating the illegal star pass. In this case, the helmet cover doesn't have to go on the pivot's head because it's the pivot itself that initiated the action. If you're trying to look this up, it's actually in the helmet cover sections of the rules. Rule 2.6.7, where it says helmet covers cannot be removed during a jam except by the player holding the designated position. In this case, the only person who can remove the jammer's helmet cover is the jammer. A couple quick scenarios where everything could look legal but isn't, and they involve the penalty box. Jammers on their way to the penalty box cannot pass the star, nor can they pass the star to a pivot who is in queue for the penalty box. Pack refs, be sure to alert the jammer referee 
if the jammer takes off the star when there's a pivot in cue for the box. Finally, something else where I bring out my old man stick, which is for Rule 5.13.16, which is in the list of penalizable illegal procedures, preventing a star pass via any means other than legal blocking. Back in the olden days, when derby dinosaurs roamed the earth, we had this thing called minor penalties. When minor penalties were taken out of the rules, most of those minors were still illegal, but now listed as no impact in their respective penalty families. So, for 99% of the game, we ignore those tiny infractions. But during a star pass, those no impact penalties can be enough to stop the star pass from occurring. For instance, if a jammer is trying to pass the star to a pivot in front of her, but has blockers between herself and that pivot, she may try to stretch out her arms to go around or above those blockers. One of those blockers, doing a small clockwise bump, may not take relative position, but could be enough to put that pass out of reach. Or the blocker could swat down the jammer's arm. Again, not loss of relative position, and we normally wouldn't penalize it, but it can kill the star pass, or even blockers circling around the jammer cover to prevent the pivot or jammer from retrieving it. Hopefully, you figured out that what I'm saying is that this rule throws out the normal impact spectrums. If there is an active star pass happening and someone performs a no impact penalty on the jammer or pivot, that is still penalizable. But only if there's an active attempt to pass the star. Should the jammer have the cover in hand but has abandoned the attempt to pass the cover, means all impact spectrums have returned to normal. So be aware of when the jammer is passing the star rather than just holding it. When I've called this penalty, I almost always have to explain why, for two reasons. The first is that, as I've already talked about, these actions wouldn't normally be a penalty. And the second is because it's called not as an illegal action, such as forearms, direction of gameplay, etc., but as an illegal procedure. Further, the verbal cue is star pass violation, so a lot of times the blockers think, I didn't touch the cover. Why am I getting a star pass violation? So if you call this, be ready to explain why. Even back when star passes were really evil to referees, evil enough that they made baby deities cry, I, as a fan of roller derby, didn't want to see them go away. I was very happy when the rules were simplified. I was able to step off one of my soapboxes. But clearly, they aren't easy yet. And short of getting rid of them, I don't see that happening anytime soon. And honestly, as much as I hate to relive my mistakes with star passes, they add a layer of excitement and strategy to the game that we'd be poorer for not having any longer. And seriously, every sport uses chess as an analogy to their game. But how many can actually say that they can perform the castling move in the middle of play. I'd like to thank Donna Olmsted and Doff Lensgren for permission to use their photographs for this presentation. If you found this presentation helpful, or think it or other presentations at refed.com might be helpful to others, please share this site. But please do not modify it or send it out without appropriate credit for its production. This presentation is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License.